Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of How to Build Your Own PC. Welcome to the last step of how to complete your build, where you're just going to install the operating system and you'll have everything done you need to, that you need to do. But first, before you do that, you need to know what an operating system is. An operating system is software that manages computer hardware and software resources and provides common services for programs or computer programs specifically. So it manages hardware, software, and the peripheral devices that are attached. So there are three main operating systems out there that people are at least somewhat familiar with, which is Microsoft Windows, mass for desktops, not for mobile devices, that's a different thing. So like I was saying, Microsoft Windows, Mac OS X, and Linux, which is more command line based, which we're going to get to in a minute, so people might not be as familiar with that one. However, I'm going to specifically talk about Windows, because that is what the vast majority of people use, and if you're building your own computer, the odds are you're going to be using Windows, because, yeah, you, there is tutorials out there for making a quote-unquote Hackintosh, where you can install uh, Mac OS X using it but like I said most people are just going to buy Windows and install that because that's what it's made for is for these custom built computers so a lot of times when I ask other people what version of Windows they use they tell me they don't know because they can't tell the difference between the older and the newer version of Windows like the last three or four they don't know so I'm going to go through and explain all those in a minute and show what they look like. But first, just to go back to the, the GUI versus command line part of this, is that GUI stands for graphic Graphical User Interface, which is the kind of desktop, kind of OS we're used to, where it's like Windows, where you click on the different icons, it opens up different menus, and you navigate using graphics. Whereas command line is you're typing in the commands to force things to happen. There is, you know, like command prompt for Windows, that's based, for Linux, that's just all you're doing. Is there is there is a graphical user interface in some versions, lots of versions of Linux, but you're just typing away to make most of the stuff, like to install software or to configure certain uh, information that you just need to click on something that on Windows. But like I said, most of this video is going to be just about the different versions of Windows, just to get you guys straight on what is old and what is new. So these next few slides are just going to be the different versions of Windows. We're going to start off with an oldie but a goodie, is Windows XP, which came out on October 25th, 2001. So about 13 to 14 years ago already. So some of you guys might still have this, but as of April... 8th, 2014, support from Microsoft has ended and there will be no more updates. So if you're still using Windows XP, you need to, you sh well, you need to, it's not even, like I think you should, you need to upgrade to a newer version of Windows because of all the security vulnerabilities left in XP. Now, how you can tell if you have XP is basically, if you recognize this background at all, you need to get a new computer. <laughs> um, but besides that, is the the green start menu button which actually says start instead of just the window symbol and the blue bar in the background if you see all that then you won't you'll I'm pretty sure you can tell that it's Windows XP and also you won't be able to upgrade past oh sorry I went too far you won't be able to tell or you won't be able to upgrade past Internet Explorer 8 because if you have XP they won't allow you to because they tell you to have Windows 7 or above so, after six years of XP being out, the successor to Windows XP was Windows Vista. Oh, let me back up a second. I went through and put in the hardware requirements for you guys to see what it took to run each OS as it came out. So you can see the evolution of hardware as well. So, so what you guys what you guys need to know when you're buying the uh, version of Windows for your computer. So when XP came out. You only needed a 2,233 megahertz processor, or a 300 megahertz processor recommended. So now we got processors now that go into like four or five gigahertz. So this is really dated, since XP is so old and obsolete, officially obsolete now. 
you only need six, 128 megs of RAM recommended. A normal computer now comes with at least four or six gigs of RAM. So for the 6,000 MB instead of 128. And a normal hard drive now is 500 gigs or a terabyte, which is 1,000 gigabytes, where you only need one and a half gig of space to install XP on your hard drive. So I'm going to show, here's the next, or its successor that came out in 2007, precisely January 30th, which is Windows Vista. Now Vista's main issue was not buying a new computer with Windows Vista, but you're trying to upgrade your old XP computer from XP to Windows Vista because the hardware requirements were so different as I was going, as I'm going to show you in the next slide. Now, you can tell if you have Vista because because of the Windows icons or they changed the start button that said start to an actual Windows icon and it has a solid black bottom here. There's no arrow yet like there is in 7 and 8, which I'll show you guys later. Actually, I don't think it's an 8. But anyway, it has these nice size widgets here that came out with 7 with eh, with Vista. I must be tired, guys. So this actually this version of Windows was only out 2 years before it was replaced with Windows 7 because I there was a lot of user complaints about performance because the like I said the hardware requirements were so different. So in the next slide if you don't remember, you only needed a 300 megahertz processor to run XP. You needed a 1 gigahertz, so a pretty steep step up from XP to Vista. You only needed 128 megabytes of RAM for XP. You needed 2,000 2, megabytes or 2 gigabytes for the 64 version, 64 bit version of Windows Vista, and 20 gigabytes compared to the 1.5 you needed to install for XP. So even if even though if you watch my other videos, you should understand what those things mean. And if you haven't, just by looking at just the numbers without the units, you can tell it takes a lot more to run Windows Vista than it did to take run XP. So all the people that had their old XP computers that were trying to upgrade to Vista, either it didn't work, or if it did, they the computer was very slow. They couldn't do anything, and they wondered why it acted so terribly. But if you had bought a computer with Vista already on it, with the service packs that came out, it wasn't too bad. But like I said, with all the user complaints, it was only out for two years. So in 2009, Windows 7 came out. So they, I, w I believe it probably was only two years after Vista in order to appease all the users who were very angry with, with Vista. So Windows 7 dropped the side, widget, the side widgets that were here in Vista and added a Windows Arrow, which as you can see is the, the, the see-through um, effect of the panes to make it look a little bit nicer, which might have added to some of the requirements. But in my opinion, really, 7 was just Vista fixed with a few cosmetic changes. Um, so and a lot of people still use 7 today even though it's been five years after it came out however I do miss the fact that they don't give Windows cool names like they do anymore like XP and Vista I think it's kinda of boring just to number the version you're on like 7, 8, 10 it's kind of, but however the good news is that you can tell which one is newer because of the number instead of the name with the names that might be more confusing so a lot of you probably recognize that you have Windows 7 with just the blue original um, Windows logo in the back and the icon here again we have the just to start button it doesn't say start but noticeable you can tell the difference between 7 and uh, Vista and 7 because of um, the arrow effect because this is not in Windows Vista so here and so here is the uh, hardware requirements of 7 which if you did if you weren't paying attention they are the exact same as Windows Vista so when newer computers came out with they might have been more powerful than Windows Vista computers but what it takes to run it is exactly the same and the price currently for Windows 7 service pack 164 bit is a hundred thirty nine ninety nine on Newegg and 
I put that and Windows the price for Windows 8 there to show you something in a minute. So so far, Win Windows Vista and Windows 7 are the same for requirements. Which brings me to the next version of Windows, which is the current one, which is Windows 8 slash 8.1. The only difference between 8 and 8.1 is they I think they added back the start button itself, the start menu, the start button and added a few more power options to make it easier for people who don't have touchscreen computers. So in 2012, with the dawn of touchscreen technology, Windows 8 was released. This was supposed to bring Windows to the cloud with being able to sign on with a Microsoft account and being able to save your data to the SkyDrive, which is similar to Google Drive, which is Microsoft's um, cloud servers instead of Google's. However, they forced, try to force you to sign on with your email instead of making a local account, as I've noticed. But I digress. Anyway, as you can see, I have two pictures because Windows 8 has a radically different start menu than the previous versions. Since a lot of new computers were going to have touch screens uh, for their uh, interface instead of a mice and keyboard, a new start menu kind of makes sense. Dot 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 for the computers that used that technology, such as the one with touch screens. However, however that uh, if you don't have one, navigating around the start menu on its own screen is kind of really clunky and hard for the average user to find their way around. Again, if they don't have one that has a touch-enabled screen. People like to compare Windows 8 to Windows Vista, but I like to refute that argument because Vista actually had a performance issue problem because of the hardware difference, whereas the difference between Windows 7 and Windows 8 is more aesthetic. Because yes, it's a little bit harder to get around the menu, but the speed of things running, of apps opening and closing, and where you can go is, I think, better on Windows 8 than Windows 7. Or the internal workings of it are, anyway. So most of the stuff is just aesthetic. Um, for, uh, menu or format changes. However, if you don't like 8 and you have it, you're in luck because the newer version of Windows that's coming out this year will let you upgrade for free. So we're gonna go take a look at that. And I have the hardware requirements for 8.1 and again it is the exact same as Vista and 7. So even though the computers keep getting better it seems uh, Microsoft software keeps, they keep keeping it at a certain level of hardware so older people with older machines can keep using the newer upgrades which is basically the opposite of what Apple does whereas where they after they upgrade a couple of times they tell you just to buy a new $2,000 laptop because they want you to Microsoft's a little bit more flexible they have you just upgrade a few, probably two three four times before they'll try to get you to buy a newer machine itself and as you can see the price difference is actually actually there is no difference because Windows 8 Pro 64-bit is the same price on Duo as Windows 7, so you can buy either one and it's the same price. Which brings me to the newest, well, the which will be the newest version of Windows when it comes out this year is Windows 10. And you're going to ask why did they go from 8 to 10 or what happened to 9? I don't know. They they just felt like we're going to call it 10, I guess just to give it a fancy name like 7 and 8 like numbers are fancier than the XP or Vista like I said I still prefer the the cooler code names from back in the day however Windows 10 is supposed to be released towards the end of 2015 so towards the end of this year and like I said the good news is that it will be a free upgrade if you have Windows 7 or Windows 8 so either way you get a free upgrade However, the free upgrade will only be available for the first year of release. After that, you will have to you have to pay for the upgrade. So if you're one of those people out there who like to wait a, a good long while before the, the technology is tested, before you want to see if it's worth upgrading, you might be left in the dust. Get all the people, I mean, I'll probably take the free upgrade. I, well, I will take the free upgrade, at least one of my computers, to see what it's like. Because I really don't want to have to pay for it if I don't want to, if it is good. But however, they don't have any word on what the pricing will be yet after the first year. But as you can see, aesthetically, it's kind of a blend between Windows 7 and Windows 8. The, visu the visuals, like the actual um, 
desktop and the way the icons look, it looks like Windows 8 still. Where Arrow has been taken back out because they want to conserve battery life for the touchscreen things like tablets and the two-in-one computers and things like that. But they went back to the older start menu like 7 was because they wanted to appease all the people who didn't like 8. So, but, I mean, it looks like 7, XP, and Vista, you know, it's very familiar to what people like. But they did retain some of the tile the tile setup from Windows 8, and they call them charms, which are just, they put them at the side of the start menu instead of the whole screen dedicated to itself, which, again, I believe will be a great, will, will uh, change back to something people like, and it will win points in their favor for Windows 10. And another thing, since it's free, that's going to earn even more points. But then again, time will tell if people will grow to like Windows 10 like they liked 7 and XP. And the hardware requirements, again, as you can see, they are the exact same as Windows Vista, Windows 7, and Windows 8. So everybody will be on the same page. Because if you have a computer that could run 7, you can run 8 or you can run 10, so the only excuse people have is they still have an old XP computer, which, like I said, since XP is no longer is is no longer valid or is totally obsolete now, that basically forces you to buy a new computer, which could run this, so, because any new machine will be able, that is Windows-based, will be able to run Windows 10, but only time will tell what people think. So at this point, I'm going to cut over to our practical side of the tutorial, where I'm going to install Windows 8.1 on my computer that I've been working on for you guys to finish that off and show you what it looks like after everything is set up and installed. So I'll see you guys in a little bit.